This is part of a series of videos I'm making to help both uh, beginning practitioners but also more established and experienced practitioners to deal with the client interaction and to work with energy during the process of setting up meetings and getting to know each other. So this first set of videos will be about the intake conversation. The intake is always a very special moment for the client because it will be the first time they'll have face-to-face -face contact with their therapist. Often the client is a little bit reluctant to talk a lot about themselves. Um, they tend to feel quite self-conscious when talking about problems. They, there are often a lot of self-judgments like gosh why am I having these problems or I'm such a loser that I'm not able to yeah, solve this myself. So often the client is a little bit stressed and also reticent uh, to share with their therapist. So it's very important during the intake um, that you create a nice atmosphere so that the client will feel heard and will feel comfortable and relaxed in this process. And I can't stress the importance of this, the quality of contact enough. There's been a lot of research on different types of therapy and what types of therapy are better to solve what type of problems. But the two largest factors, when it comes to psychological therapy at least, are the situation the client is in. Are they in a situation where they're getting social support for the process or the change they're going through or dealing with their problems? And how is the personal contact, how's the trust level, the, how at ease is the client with their therapist? And those two factors are really the main determinants. So it doesn't matter that much whether the person has a degree or not or what type of technique they use compared to these two factors. These two factors put together are about 70% of whether the treatment will be successful or not. And the other 30%, sometimes 40%, will depend on the treatment method. Because without the good quality of contact and without a situation in which the client is able to grow and to transform, it doesn't matter what you do if it doesn't get transferred into the client. Because the client has to be willing to accept what you're sharing with them, what you're giving to them either in words or in advice or, or even direct treatment. It's just like words can be ignored and pushed out. Same can happen with energy. So if you notice that you and your client don't really click um, and maybe it's something which will go away because clients tend to be nervous in the first few sessions but if you notice after about three or four sessions and you and your client still don't have a click, it might be good to refer the client on to somebody else if the client is open for that, because often clients don't like to be shoved around or referred. Um, a lot of the clients I try to refer tend up not going, uh, but just trying to struggle on with their problems themselves. And they yeah, have a negative experience, like, gosh, I went to this guy and he didn't help me, and. I'm sure that whoever he's sending me off to also won't be able to help me. So they tend to have a very negative expectation and they tend to have also quite high hopes when they do go to a therapist. They think that the therapist can solve all their problems but unfortunately this is not always true and you need to sometimes really bring it to the giant the client gently that even though you have some skills you're also a specialist and there's things you can and cannot do, and techniques you know and you don't know. And what can sometimes really help is to have a first session with the client together with the person you're referring to. Because there's a big hurdle for the client to go to a stranger. But if yeah, they're able to first build up some experience with the person you're handing them off to, then often there will be 
a lot more feeling of the client of continuity of treatment and um, they will feel more that it is a continuation of their process rather than that you're dropping them and that then they have to find their way on their own again. So to have that it's very important to create a good atmosphere. So it is ideal if you're not disturbed so turn off the mobile phones, make sure there's no other people barging in on you um, and try to yeah really break the ice a little bit, offer them something to drink, something to eat, uh, make a little small talk also, how are you doing, uh, gosh what weather are we having, will you be going on a holiday this summer um, and yeah, did you see that soccer match last night or whatever, a little small talk so they feel that it is not only focused on their problem um, but you're trying to show an interest in them as a person so th that they feel they're more to you than just a problem which needs to be solved or a piece of work which needs to be finished and then moved on. Try to create a real human contact with them. Some people also don't like it. There's clients who say like, hey, I'm paying you by the hour, so I expect you to work on my problem and not chit chat and waste my time and waste my money. Uh, there's also clients like this, but most people will enjoy having a little chit chat now and then. And also personally, um, I don't charge for the time I spend socializing with my client when I'm talking about like what movie they saw, whatever. Uh, it's just a little bonus and if I spend 10 minutes on doing that um, I find it in a way really makes the rest of the conversation and the rest of the session a lot easier and I'm not really uh, by the minute charging usually. Um, so I tend to be flexible, talk about that and only charge them for the time I'm actually working on their problem. So, just some little pointers to the intake and I'll now take you to the intake process in an example form in the next few videos.